Hi, my name is Rachel Paxton. Today I'm going to show you how to can homemade grape juice. In this class I'll show you how to make and can grape juice. I'll lead you through the process step by step. I'll give you the recipe and canning supply list you can download and print out for future reference. You'll also gain the confidence you need to try more canning recipes on your own. For this recipe you just need grapes. Uh, purple grapes or green grapes and sugar is optional depending on how sweet your grapes are. You'll need a boiling water canner, a canning rack if you're using your own stock pot, a jar lifter, a wide mouth funnel, and quart sized canning jars. This is a boiling water canner. If you don't have one you're going to need to get one. You can get them at Walmart or um, online at Amazon. There's a link to this in the supply list in your course materials. They're about $30 and then you'll be all set to start boiling water canning. This is what the canning rack looks like. It comes with the boiling water canner, but if you want to use your own stock pot, you can um, get a canning rack like this to put in the bottom of it so your jars don't sit on the bottom of your pan. They're about $10. You can order them separately and there's a link to this in your supply list and your course materials. If you um, are going to use your own stock pot, you need to make sure your pot is tall enough that you can allow for an inch of water above your jars when you're canning. You need a jar lifter to take your jars in and out of the canner. Your funnel lets you put your food in your jars easily. You want to fill your canner about three quarters away full with water. You probably don't need to start heating it quite yet because it's going to take a little while to do the other stuff. So just get it ready. You want to sterilize your jars, rings, and lids in the dishwasher. It's easiest to do it in the dishwasher. You can also do it in boiling water on the stove, but that takes up a lot of room on your stove. You can um, reuse your jars and rings, but you need to use new lids every time. They're very inexpensive. I always buy extra, so I never run out in the middle of a canning project. Um, just um, run them through the dishwasher and let them sit there until you're ready to use them. First you want to rinse the grapes and remove the stems. Um, for the, you don't have to remove every stem because you're going to be putting them through your um, jelly strainer. But um, get, just get off as many as you can and um, just make sure that you get all the dirt and stuff off of them. I use purple grapes for this recipe. And it doesn't matter if they have seeds in them or not. And this recipe is actually good for grapes that do have seeds in them because the seeds will come out when you strain your juice. So place the grapes in a large stock pot. I didn't measure the water. I just added enough water to cover the grapes. You're going to be adding water to it again later anyway, so it doesn't matter if you have water in it. You want to simmer until the grapes are soft, about 20 to 30 minutes, and then crush them with a potato masher want to place the grapes in a jelly bag like this one. These are less than $10. You can get them on Amazon. There's a link to this in the supply list in your course materials. This allows you to get the um, to get all the juice out of your grapes without any seeds or um, grape pulp in your grape juice. It makes a nice clear juice. So um, put your grape, your cooked grapes in your jelly bag and strain the juice out. Then I placed the strained juice in the stock pot. I added a little water to dilute it. This is really strong grape juice. You're not going to want to drink it straight. Um, so I added some water and then I added some sugar. The, these um, purple grapes are a lot sweeter than the green grapes I had. So it's up to you how much sugar. You can put no sugar in it or as much or as little as you want until it tastes right to you. And then you want to use a candy thermometer to heat your juice to 190 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not boiling. You don't want it to boil. After it's 190 degrees, you want to ladle your juice into the jars, even a quarter inch headspace. The headspace is the amount of space between the top of the juice and the top of the jar. You, um, this will not expand very much, hardly at all, when you heat it. That's why it only needs a quarter of an inch, but that's more important for other recipes. So whatever your recipe says, make sure to follow the instructions. Next, you want to wipe the rims of the jars with a damp paper towel or dish towel. 
and place the rings and lids on the jars um, until they're just finger tight. And I forgot to mention, um, if you notice there's any pulp in your jars, if your um, strainer did not strain out everything, um, one of the recipes I was reading said that you can actually let your juice sit for a couple of hours before you heat it to the 190 degrees. And if you let it sit for a couple hours or if you even put it in the refrigerator for a while, the, um, the remaining pulp or sediment, as they call it, will settle to the bottom of the pan. And if there is any, it will go to the bottom. And then you can ladle out the juice above it and put it in your pan and then heat it to the 190 degrees. I didn't do that with mine because I don't think there was hardly any pulp in the juice. It was very clear and you're not going to even see it at all in the uh, purple grape juice. In the green grape juice that I made, it was very, very clear. And so if there is anything in the juice, you're going to be able to see it because it's so clear. So in that case, you might want to try a little harder to um, have a clear juice. Of course, if there is anything in it, it's not going to hurt you. It's just little pieces of grape. But um, if you want your juice really, really clear, you can either strain your juice two times or you can let it sit, like I said, and the sediment will settle to the bottom and then just take a ladle and ladle the juice out, try not to disturb the sediment, sediment at the bottom. So that's how you get a perfectly clear juice. I didn't go to all the effort on mine because it looked clear enough to me. So it's not a matter of safety at all. It's just a matter of your preference and how clear that you want your juice to be. So um, wipe your rims and put your rings and lids on the jars. Put them in the boiling water canner and process them for 15 minutes. If you don't, um, if your water's not boiling when you put it in the pan, uh, don't start your timer until it starts boiling. And you need to make sure you have an inch of water above your jars. If you live above a thousand feet in elevation, you need to process your jars for more than 15 minutes. And so check your altitude adjustment chart and your course materials if you need to. And after the timer goes off, take your jars out of the canner with your jar lifter. Put them on a towel on the kitchen counter to cool. Usually your jars will seal in the canner, but sometimes they don't. Um, it can take 10 to 15 minutes for them to cool and then the jars will seal. Um, you can tell if the jars are sealed or not by pressing your finger down in the middle of the lid. If they go down and up again, then it is not sealed. You can still drink it, but you need to put it in the refrigerator and drink it in a week or two. If it is sealed, you can put it in a cool, dark place for one to two years or more. Um, I really enjoyed making this. This is the first time I made it this year. There's a couple of different ways that you can strain berries for juice. If you there are steamer juicers that you can buy, but they they cost about sixty dollars, I think, and I don't have one of those yet. But that's another way that you can get the juice out of the grapes. Um, the old-fashioned way is by using the jelly bag. You can also use um, cheesecloth if you have if you have cheesecloth. You can um, put three layers of it in a side of a colander, and then put your grapes in the colander, and the juice will. Um, filter out of the colander into your bowl or whatever's underneath it. So that is another way that you can strain the juice. So, um, and if you're making jelly, then you would do this same process and then use this basically to make your jelly. So that's how you make grape juice. It's really pretty and it tastes as good as it looks. I never had homemade grape juice before and it's delicious. So if you have grapes that you've grown or if somebody has given you grapes and this is a great way to use it and once you've had this homemade grape juice you won't want grape juice from the store anymore it's delicious so give it a try and see what you think